Welcome to Ask the Animals Productions, where we look at natural science without evolution. The video you're about to see is a short clip from our DVD, Red in Tooth and Claw, Who Created the Predators? In this presentation, we examine this very important subject, because obviously there were no predators in Eden, so how did they get here? We hope you find this video useful, but remember there's a lot more available on the DVD itself. Predators. What are they? Why are they here? And most importantly, who put them here? Did God create them, or are they the products of Satan's foul designs? Wouldn't we be better off without them, by getting rid of them whenever possible? In this presentation, we will examine the evidence to try to make sense of this difficult topic. To start, we must be clear that there is very little inspiration that sheds light in this area. There are hints and ideas, but few unmistakable statements. That doesn't mean that we should ignore these questions, because everyone automatically makes up their mind about them anyway. The trouble with most people's opinions is that they are made on the basis of cultural biases, personal prejudices, or usually contradictory divisions of nature into good animals and bad animals. I am going to address this from my experience as a naturalist. Being a general naturalist has many advantages in that it provides a look at the big picture that other specialists may miss. We'll start with some foundations that underlie all else. I hold the following basic and critical premises. In the beginning, God made all life on earth in six days, resting on the seventh day. Everything was perfect. There was no death or decay, disease or corruption. All animals were vegetarian, as no animal killed another animal for food. In Genesis 1 verse 30 we read, And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to every thing that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat. And it was so. When we see the word meat in the King James Version, the Hebrew word actually means the nonspecific food. The context determines what kind of food is referred to, plants for vegetarians, and after the fall it can refer to flesh for meat eaters. In the perfect Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve were at peace with all life around them. They neither harmed any animals nor were harmed by them. Then sin came and everything became ruined and broken. Everyone who trusts the biblical account in Genesis will agree with these premises. Now is where our problem begins. Death is evil, ugly, and cruel. Even when death brings an end to suffering and pain, it is still not part of God's perfect plan and is totally opposed to his nature. So where did the predators come from? First of all, we need a clear definition of terms. Animals can be divided into three major groups based on their lifestyle and diet. First, the herbivores. This is a huge group that contains all the vegetarian animals. This includes many subgroups that I won't list by their technical names, but this covers eaters of grass, nuts, wood, nectar, fungus, pollen, roots, leaves, algae, fruit, and vegetables. Each subgroup has their own design of teeth, stomach, and intestines that will clearly tell you what that animal eats even if you never watch that species feeding. Second, the predators. This group is much larger than most people realize since the popular idea of this group is limited to raw meat eaters like leopards, sharks, and eagles. But that is just a subgroup called the carnivores. Other subgroups include fish eaters, like seals, cormorants, and water snakes. A massive subgroup includes eaters of insects and spiders. Many birds that we admire and love are in fact voracious predators, devouring insects by the thousands. Many small mammals, virtually all spiders, a high percentage of insects, most frogs and toads, and salamanders all feed in this way. 
A final subgroup includes the scavengers, those who feed on animals already dead. Many animals who kill their own food will eat carrion on occasion, but some species specialize on this diet. Many insects, like flies and wasps, eat carrion when they are young. Other animals do so their whole life, such as crabs, vultures, hagfish, and sea snails. So we need to realize that there are far more predators in this world than are generally thought. This includes many species we categorize as the good animals, like ladybird beetles, whales, frogs, and cranes, as well as what we call the bad animals, like wolves and alligators. Third, the parasites. This is by far the smallest group, specialists that live either outside or inside other animals. They feed on blood or skin or muscle or drain nutrients from their host internally. Their actions weaken their hosts, but the parasite's goal usually is not to kill. Death may result if too many parasites weaken a host too much, or a disease carried by the parasite may kill the host. But that is not intentional or even beneficial to most parasites, as they often die when their host dies. So these three categories cover virtually all food choices by animals. Many fit into two of these categories, as a huge number of predators also eat plants. We call bears predators, but only the polar bear is totally a meat-eater. Most bears eat both plants and animals. The spectacled bear eats mostly plants. The panda bear eats only bamboo. As a side note, can anyone guess which group humans belong to? Most people assume we are carnivores, or possibly omnivores, eaters of both plants and flesh. But if we examine our teeth, stomach, and intestines, and then compare those with the various designs in nature, we find that humans belong to the subcategory of herbivores called frugivores. When we eat meat, it doesn't digest properly and creates physical ailments. That's why even perfectly healthy meat will still make humans sick, as our bodies are only marginally able to process flesh in our diet. So now we can explore the origins of the three groups. Herbivores obviously came from the very beginning, as created in the Garden of Eden. But what about the predators, and by extension, the parasites? Can we discover who created them? There are three options. One, the predators somehow developed on their own, gradually changing from plant eaters to flesh eaters. Two, Satan made the predators, either directly or indirectly. Three, God recreated certain animals so that they could kill other animals and eat them. Let us examine each option to see what is possible and reasonable. 